have Rob on the CTS side do a quick introduction and talk about his role and why Paycor. And then we'll talk about the partnership. We're going to kick it over to Megan, who's going to jump in and lead our product demonstration today. So she'll be leading uh, that. So you can do your questions throughout, um, or you can save them to the end. We will be having a Q&A and a closing remarks at the end. So uh, to kind of jump right in with some of the introductions, I'll, I'll start with myself. Uh, my name is Brett Allen. Uh, I'm a regional sales director here at Paycor. I've been with Paycor for six years. Uh, so I have the privilege of leading Jimmy on my side, who heads up the partnership with CTS as well as Concordia. Uh, so Jimmy, I will kick it over to you to do an introduction. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Jimmy Greenwood, uh, seller at Paycor, um, based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been working with Brett and Concordia for about two years now, almost two years now, and working with other groups like Concordia Technology Solutions as well. So I look forward to working with you guys. Awesome. Then Megan, I'll kick it over to you and Rob, you can round us home. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I've been with Paycor for about six years and come from a multi-industry background. So I will be your tech guru for the day, riding you through the technology. Awesome. Rob, I'll kick it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We absolutely love the partnership that we have with Paycor. When we were looking at who do we want to partner with uh, that really understands our customers and uh, can really fully integrate with our software, Paycor really stood above the rest. And uh, you know, I hope that you kind of see the value of why we love working with them and you know, if you have any questions about um, how Paycor integrates with uh, Shepherd Staff, feel free to shoot me an email at rob.davidson at cph.org, and I can connect you with our uh, our team who can kind of walk you through it at a really, really intricate level uh, and kind of take into any of the, the specific pieces that your church has uh, into account. So I'm looking forward to seeing everything Paycor has to uh, showcase today. So it's been a great partnership. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. So who are we? Who's Paycor? So just a high level 10,000 foot overview. Paycor has been in business for 30 plus years. Uh, we have 40,000 clients in all 50 states. The cool part that I think is really great there on all the slide or on the, the slide here is that 50% of our customers actually come from advisors like CTS. Uh, I, don't or think uh, I don't think your screen changed. Oh, sorry. How about now? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You're good. So uh, as you can see here, 50% of our clients actually come from our customers or a trusted advisor like CTS. So uh, we would recognize a lot of the awards, as you can see down there, we have a 4.4 out of 5 rating on Capterra, uh, which is great. So technology is amazing. I think you guys are definitely going to love what you see today. Here's kind of a, what we call a technology wheel. So think about we can do a lot. We can cover a lot of things from hiring all the way to retiring, uh, from things like recruiting and onboarding, uh, payroll, HR, time, scheduling. But we're not going to have enough time to get into all of that today. Uh, really, for the demo today that Megan will be going over, we'll really focus on the onboarding portion, that employee profile from an HR standpoint, obviously time and attendance and payroll, and we'll get into some reporting. Um, but if you see if any other things on here, that maybe organization would like to take advantage of. Uh, it's not a one size fits all. We can definitely piecemeal and get you uh, the right solution that'll work best for your organization. And Rob kind of hit on this, but you know, at Paycor, uh, we started the partnership uh, a long time ago with Shepherd Staff and the CTS Group. Uh, we have about six thousand plus nonprofit and faith based organizations that work with Paycor outside of even the CTS. So this is an industry and a vertical that we know. Uh, we know very very well. Uh, we've again got the expertise with a ninety three percent client retention rate. Uh, all of our team, we built out playbooks in different organizations for the nonprofit and the religious space. Uh, so they understand the exemption from, you know, called workers or from anything of that nature. Uh, so that we, we were making sure that set you up correctly and the organization is doing it appropriately. Um, again, we, we, as you can see up there on the top right, we have 290,000 uh, pastors, teachers, and other lay ministry workers that we, we pay today. So we're pretty proud of the, the vertical and the industry that we work on. Uh, and you guys will definitely notice that if you choose Paycor. So we're going to back it up here real quick, and then I'm going to kick it over to Megan. So I, I mentioned this already, but if you guys have any questions throughout the demonstration, uh, don't hesitate to shoot them in the chat functionality, shoot them into the Q&A. Uh, and then at the end, if there's anyone that maybe uh, doesn't want to do that, wants to save to the end, that's totally fine as well. We'll answer them as well. 
So Megan, I will kick it over to you and stop sharing my screen so you can take over and drive the wheel. Excellent. Thank you. All no right, problem. everyone, you should see coming up on the screen, it should say, good afternoon, Michael. Let me know when that's visible. Jimmy, I can see you. If you can nod, that that's good. All right. So when we think about walking through Paycor, Paycor can be accessed anywhere that the internet can be accessed. We have a wonderful iPad app. We also have a wonderful app for the mobile or smartphone. So we can put the technology in the hands of your staff where they need it most. Here we're looking at a company administrator view. This is Michael Banks. He has full access to the system and we'll be guiding through as his perspective for most of the call today. We'll also look at a new hire perspective as well as a manager perspective and an employee perspective. So I'll make sure that I highlight which perspective we're looking at. Paycor has one system. So in order to give you additional functionality, we don't need to upgrade you to a different version of our platform. This one platform will serve you whether you have two employees or 20,000. This allows us to really make sure that we can scale the technology for what you need, opening up additional cloud-based fields as you need it with additional functionality. Now, every employee is going to have this blue background. They're also going to have white widgets here, which will populate based on your access level and based on the tools that you have with Paycor. If we look here on the left-hand side, there's also a sidebar search navigation, so you can quickly and easily find the pieces of the system that are important to you through a quick search. We also have a single login. So Michael might be a company administrator, but he's also an employee. So this is his profile, task, pay stubs, and W-2s along the top. Since he manages the entire organization, he has a shortcut to manage people. But if you have any direct reports, not only will you have manage people, you'll also have search employees up at the top. We have a number of features here on Michael's screen that other folks could not see with lower access levels. That's things like compliance warnings, where we want to make sure that we call out compliance where we can help you as a technology provider. This could be payroll or tax compliance. We also have the contact us button because if you need help from us, we're not hiding from you. You can call or chat in and you'll get a live human between 10 and 30 seconds on chat and under two minutes on the phone. There's also an easy to see case portal, which you can also access up here under the question mark. There's a number of resources here from step-by-step -step screenshots and instructions if you're more of the do-it-yourself type. There's different guides and notices and things like products updates or compliance, as well as the support center, which will be wonderful things like training, as well as your case portal and webinar resources. Over here on the left hand side, if I scroll down to the bottom, we're going to see a resource center and this will show you and highlight specific compliance, our webinars, as well as pay core specific training for our system. When we think about taking care of our direct reports as a leader, we're not only going to have the My Team section, which is going to highlight things like birthday and anniversaries, time card, pending time off requests for the people who rely on you most as a leader. But we also have the ability to see leadership insights. So for the clients that need to have some more leader oversight, to have the ability to see things like surveys and where we can focus energy on our team to better coach them, optimize them, and ultimately retain them, this will highlight some of those key features. It's broken down by employee on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, we've got the ability to really see things like pay rate and promotions, recognition, one-on-ones, and making sure that people are taking time off when they need it. So this is an indispensable tool for leaders and administrators who can see their entire leadership staff if they need to. Now we'll spend some time in some of these other widgets, but as a perspective change, I'm gonna highlight for you Michelle Patterson. And popping up here, we should see her dashboard and it should say similarly, good afternoon, Michelle. And what's important when we see this is that it looks very much the same as Michael, but from this employee base perspective, she can only see her own information. So this is a really big key piece of our system and it's highly beneficial to a number of our different employee and client bases um, throughout. That way they can see what they need to to do their job and not what they don't. Now, something that you've seen on both dashboards is this engage feature. This is a community aspect where we can have this show things like recognition or acknowledgement for an entire organization, but it can also be pared down to a team, a department, 
or a location so that you can communicate things like inclement weather warnings or something like a company picnic. You can also pin key resources so that you can easily see things that people might need to access or link to. And so this is highly beneficial, whether it's, hey, we've got a company picnic, we want everybody to come attend or something else from a resource perspective. If I go to the side and search payroll, we can see quickly and easily that she doesn't have payroll access. And this is a little bit of how Paycor works. Moving back to Michael Banks, our company administrator view, we've got this manage people section. And this is really how we kick off our onboarding process. So when we think about how a client could possibly get employees into the system, we want to make that as quick and easy for them as possible. Here we can bring on one person at a time, or if you need to, we can pull on multiple new hires at once. When we begin this process, we can do a volunteer or unpaid employee, but we also can do W-2 and 1099 employees. It's important to know here that we would click on 1099 to create that 1099 tax packet versus a default W-2. And here, if we have um, just three pieces of information, first name, last name, and email, this will allow us to kick off an automated invite for onboarding. We can also choose a work location, and then we can delegate someone to look at the I-9 documents, whether that's ourself or even a third-party notary. We also have our onboarding groups, which are customized packets of paper, because we understand that certain people might need to fill out certain forms for an organization. And here we can customize that. So we can say a full-time person needs to fill out and sign these, whereas a part-time person or a remote employee needs to fill out these. You also can upload one-off accommodation documents and as many as you need. We also understand the importance here of being able to coordinate between groups within a company. So being able to make a task list, what task internally needs to be done, when does it need to be due by, and who's responsible for this action. You can create custom templates as well. So for instance, if we had a full-time in-office employee, maybe HR would prep a badge, maybe a manager would plan to walk them around for orientation, and maybe IT will prepare a workstation for them. And these can be launched out right when we send this new hire launch. Now, at this point, this takes us back to our candidate or new hire experience. So you should see Welcome Carrie Smith populating up on the screen. This allows us to send out a warm and fuzzy welcome invite. So when that new hire is coming on board, they not only, not only know who to reach out to if they need help in the organization, but they can start navigating through their different tasks. We capture personal and contact information up front. And forgive me, let me give this a quick refresh here. I timed out on my screen. So what's important about the personal and contact information as this spins back to life is that we capture this one time up front. So we wanna reduce the amount of redundant entry as much as possible, not only for the administrative staff, but for employees as well. So once we capture the key information here, compliant information with RED, we have the ability to go through and push it through the rest of the system. So here it's gonna capture legal address, which will generate taxes and emergency contacts. There's a tax credit screening when you're not a nonprofit, but we also have the I-9 section, which is gonna automate based on citizenship. Here we can go through and fill out the information for the I-9, where it's gonna populate on the actual I-9 form. This saves our team time, saves your team time, and we also can connect this to E-Verify. The person or administrator who would be responsible on the back end for filling out list A, B, and C documents will do that, um, but they have the ability to see that on their own administrative dashboard. The next piece that's going to allow us to capture is the direct deposit. And this is really multiple pay options. So we can do direct deposit, which will look a little something like this. But if you have checks or if you need pay cards, we've got those options for you here at Paycor as well. The tax credit screening starts up with a wizard that walks through federal and state taxes. This will also capture living and work in taxes, local and county taxes if needed. We have additional information that we can capture, which is a catch-all. This allows us to capture anything that you need to know about this employee as you onboard them, most commonly capturing things like avoided check copy, a uniform or shirt size, or even things like license plate and driver's license numbers. You can have as many fields here as you'd like, and they're all reportable.
The document section is that customized onboarding group packet that you selected in the pre-step. This allows them to select a document, go through and scribble in a signature. And once they do sign, it's going to time date and stamp with an IP address on every single page. Finally, they're going to review this information, and this captures everything that we need to capture from an employee as they onboard into our system. The important piece that we can see here from Michael's perspective, again back to our company administrator, is that we're going to have a widget for anybody who participates in the onboarding process so that there's a quick snapshot to see which pending new hires are coming on board and fill out any final information. So here we can see that Nick Lachey was supposed to start a couple days ago, but he hasn't opened his invitation. This would maybe indicate that we need to grab that employee and pull them in. But here we have Gina Reynolds, who's essentially complete, and this will allow us as an administrator to to capture the pieces that we need to fill in. This can be things like position. What is their pay frequency? Who is their manager? And what is the work location that they work at? We also will capture those list A, B, and C documents here on the I-9. And if we need to send to E-Verify, we can. We're also going to fill out compensation because most organizations don't want to have the employee do this on their own. Finally, when we think about our timekeeping components, this is where we'll fill that out, assigning them a profile in a group, as well as a time off plan to make sure that they have everything they need when we hit this hire button. In Paycor, this is a major automation step for us because it can launch a benefits open enrollment event. It could even launch a learning management event, but it will create an employee profile and it will allow someone to pay them on the next payroll. If I click on the Paycor logo or the logo of the companies that would utilize this, this is a shortcut back to the dashboard every time. This helps make sure that navigation in our system is straightforward and easy. Back under this Manage People section, this is where everybody comes to live. This is the employee profile or personnel files. If you think about a filing cabinet in the corner with manila folders, that's exactly what you're getting here. You can filter and sort for those different people. You can search for an employee by first name, last name, or employee number. And most importantly, as you navigate through, you have different settings so that you can see people in different capacities. There's also the ability to do bulk actions from here, like reassign a manager or push out a form. But if we click on one of these personnel files like Connie here, we have the ability to go through and see some key information on her profile. Here on the summary screen, we're going to see not only all the information that we filled out in onboarding and that she filled out in onboarding, but we have shortcuts to the most commonly viewed items as an employee. Under each drawer on the side, we have compliantly mapped this out for security purposes. We have pay and tax items separate from our I-9 and separate from our benefit information. We have this in one single shot, though, so that you can access anything that's necessary. Under pay and tax stubs, these are actual pay and tax documents. Not only can you access these from the, the shortcut on the dashboard, but you can come in here and see and even send out multiple stubs at once. If an employee needs to send out for a mortgage or an auto loan, they can not only grab this from here, but they can also send this out via the mobile device that we'll see soon. Under the time section, this will be things like time off request and time cards, scheduling criteria and labor codes that could be associated to different grant work for nonprofits, job out costing and allocations to different groups like manufacturing, healthcare, or, um, or construction industries, as well as the ability to capture the time card and time off request for most organizations. We have status changes for when leave or terminations happen, and the position and personal drawers are those HR drawers, capturing things like the I-9 completed, certifications, education, and skill levels. Positions similar in all the documents that we've captured in onboarding, as well as any assets that we assign to someone. So it's nice to know that there's really a place for just about everything to live on the employee personnel file so that you can document, report upon, and even create some self-service items. When we think about self-service, this might be something along the lines of a workflow. So paired with our employee profiles are automation points in a system to make the administrative staff, the management staff, and the employee staff's lives easier. We have the ability to do things like task lists, which we saw in onboarding, but these tasks don't just have to be for onboarding. They could be for a termination workflow or a leave of absence workflow, or even, hey, we're having a company picnic. Jimmy, bring the barbecue. Megan, bring the potato salad. We also have reminders. This is going to be, hey, don't forget to approve your time card, or hey, it's somebody's birthday today. 
We also have traditional workflows, which are really important. When you think about things like who needs to approve an action or who needs to just simply be notified of such, such thing. Here under direct deposit as an example, if I were an employee and I were gonna change my direct deposit, this might need to go to an HR administrator to approve. It might need to go to that employee to let me know that my direct deposit has been confirmed and updated. Finally, we also have a form and document library, which is a robust way to have all of your documents electronic. When we send a form out of this section to be signed by anyone, it will go land in that employee's file without needing to scan or upload it. We have a number of different forms in here from flat and fillable PDFs to a dynamic document, which is Paycor's solution for a DocuSign. We also can create a form in here. So if there's some sort of FYI that needs to go out to the entire staff to be notified of, we can make that form in here instead of going to somewhere like Microsoft Word or Adobe to create a form, upload, and then send out. We also can create a, a document as a resource document if your team would need to reference this document at any point in their employment with a company. We also have a tracking center to make sure that we can see where those documents are in flight, especially for multiple signers. And if you forget how to do something, all of your resources are here under this hyperlink. And you'll notice this throughout the system on different screens we visit today. Heading back to the dashboard outside of our HR components, the automations and the profiles, we have the ability to have robust timekeeping. This is actually something we do incredibly well here at Paycor, and that is to be able to accommodate all kinds of different time collection methods, setups, and configurations. We understand that different organizations capture things in different ways, and so these different clocking methods highlight the fact we can do things from fingerprints, ID cards, proximity badges, facial recognition, mobile punching, app punching, web-based browser, and time seat. They are very common in a number of different industries, and they can be assigned in different formats to the same organization, meaning maybe Jimmy is allowed to mobile punch, but maybe I've had an infraction that does not allow me to lo any longer mobile punch. Back on Michael's dashboard, we've got an example of a web-based punch. And so if I scroll down here, we should see create punch on the screen. When I click this, this has an example of what we call job costing. So if you need to determine which project we're working on, or if this ties back to a specific grant or funding option, we could tie that in here. This also could be things like client project and job. But quite simply, if we don't need to punch in or punch out to any type of allocation, it will simply show their department, allow them to punch in, punch out, or transfer punch. There's also the ability to fill in a missed punch where the employee would say, hey, I missed my punch, and they give a reason. We also have the ability to see all of these punches from a beautiful dashboard called the Time Insights Dashboard. As an administrator or supervisor manager, this lets you see all the information that your employees have when it comes to clocking. If you go to the Today view, this will show you who's in or out for the day, who's scheduled, or who's potentially on break or at lunch. When you think about looking at the weekly view, this might highlight if somebody's approaching or earning overtime, or if there's anything called a critical exception or non-critical exception that we might need to take a peek at. These exceptions are basically divided into two pieces, critical being this affects somebody's pay when it's not corrected. Think missed punch. If we don't have an out punch, we don't know how many hours someone worked in a day, therefore we could not pay them accurately. When we think about a non-critical exception, this might be, hey, Megan came in, but she was 10 minutes late, and this will allow us to notify um, of such infractions. We also have the ability to export hours, see time off request, see scheduled hours, exceptions, and attestations if those are needed. Below, we can hone in on some of those uh, errors like Ann Barr has here. This is populating this individual employee's time card, and this will allow us to see anything that she has missed, like a punch, or if she was out of bounds, or if she had a meal break. So here it's showing that she has two out of bounds punches because we have the ability to geofence a location, IP restrict, or even um, have something called geovalidation. 
We can simply acknowledge this and then when we're ready, we can simply approve the time card. And again, here's all of the time card resources you might need as you go through an approval process. You can flip through your time cards to see the next person within your um, direct reports. And once this is finalized, there's also a pre-step. So if you're a payroll administrator, we give the ability to see anything that's outstanding. So who still has errors on their time card that need to be corrected. When these are corrected, we have one pre-step to payroll, and that's locking our time cards to confirm that our time data is not only in, but accurate. At this stage, it allows us to head over to our payroll processing, where we can begin running a payroll and separate out our different pay groups. So whether it's weekly or biweekly, monthly or semi-annually, we will help you build out your different pay frequencies. This allows you to also add in manual checks or add additional pay runs, which we can do and we do not charge for. This allows the flexibility to run additional payroll runs when you need it, when you have a final check, or if you wanna isolate a bonus or commission or gift run. We can also filter and sort up here at the top if we want to isolate one group over another. When we begin processing a payroll, it's quite simply pulling over from our Paycor time. Now, it does say the word import because we have flexibility and customization in our system. If you need to pull a file in from outside the system, you can import data into the payroll section. When we hit the word import with Paycor time selected or expense management, it will grab whatever has been approved and locked. It's going to allow us to see that there's 415 hours populating within our pay grid. Here we can see our list of employees on the left. We can see green dots, which means everybody's an active employee versus a yellow on leave or a red recently terminated. This entire group is net direct deposit. We can see the different departments everyone works in, and if there was labor allocations or grant allocations, we'd see that here. There's also the different rates of pay that are possible for an employee, and most importantly, the regular hourly hours that pulled in, as well as some salaried staff, and an auto allowance, which is a reoccurring earning. We can customize this grid, so if we don't want to say holiday pay or meal break penalties, we can simply remove these columns, but if we'd like to see PTO or paid leave or vacation, we can simply add that in. We also can import additional items to the pay run here. We can add in a specific employee to this pay run if they're not already in it. We can split tasks between multiple people, like maybe Jimmy and I will both run payroll and split our tasks together. We can add a pay stub message to one person or the entire company. We also can gross up a check or all checks that we need, like a bonus run. We give you the ability to add in a manual check or another regular check to this same pay run, and you can also add a line item of pay if there's additional hours that have been worked. Payroll gives you the flexibility to make changes in real time, as well as leave yourself a post-it note. So here is a note that we need to change this medical deduction for just this payroll for whatever reason. I simply can click on this employee, head to deductions, and I can key over this earning code. It will create a pay-related change to let us know that we've made this audit. When everything looks good and we have everything that we need within payroll, we can move forward. And I'll show a highlight something that will give us a stopgap to ensure that we have everything correct. I backed out this individual's pay to show the stopgap of an unpaid worker. We want to make sure that we're not missing people who might need to be paid. So here's a warning that will flag us for this. This could pop up for things like PTO that's not been approved yet or a retro pay, potentially something like a minimum wage requirement not being met. And so we try and alert you wherever possible of a potential error. This next screen is a wonder of checks and balances. From liability or variance summaries, which allow us to pick a payroll to compare against and see how many variances, if any, there are. It's also going to highlight the important things like that employee not being paid. We also have liability summaries below where we can see our net cash employee and employer liabilities. We also have our bank details here, as well as our gross earnings and deductions, where we can click on that, see the information, and even export it out if we'd like. On the top right-hand side, we've got our pre-post journal or payroll register, as it's called, as well as a number of different auditing reports, from auditing to cash requirements to even job costing. We can export these out ahead of time, and if we find an error, it's quite simple to go back, make the correction, and move back to this step. 
When we're ready to fire out payroll, we simply hit approve pay run where it could go through a multi-step approval process or it can fly out the door for check date. Finally, we have our reports because we know that these will pop up right after payroll. So these payroll reports are these reports um, in this section where we can look and reference those at any time. We also can see tax reports from here. So if you need to see a W-3 or a SUI statement, that would be in this section. There's also our custom report builder, which gives us a nimbleness to have not only things like standard reports, which are those common templates that are often requested, things like ACA reports or EEO reports, California pay data, among a number of different um, commonly used and commonly looked at detail for a company. But if these standard reports don't have what you're looking for, you can take one of these reports and customize it, or you can build an ad hoc report from scratch. Now, if we were looking at this expiring certifications template, this is telling you what fields are pulling into this report. But if this is close to what you want or nothing like what you want, you can simply go to columns, add and delete the ones you want, and it has an easy search feature. So if I want to pull in a name, here's all the name fields that I have. Or I can pull in a social security, or I can go through each one of these drawers and see all of the data fields within Paycor, even custom fields to pull into this report. We can filter, format, and choose our specific output, which is robust compared to some systems in the market um, that allow you to see it in the format that you need. We can also share the report with someone in the organization when we run it, or we can schedule this report so that it can be sent out to whoever you need in an email, as well as have the subject line customized, the format customized, and the delivery timing customized. Anything you custom, build from scratch or schedule will live under my report. So someone won't have to reinvent the wheel once they've created a report that they need and like. We also have Paycor Analytics, which is really important because when you think about the strategic reports that you might need, granular reporting that we saw on the other side is gonna help you 90% of the time to see those list type reports. But this is gonna be a very powerful analytic tool to help see what's going on overall with the organization. Now, this will be an industry specific dashboard. In my demo world, it's a manufacturing one. Here we can see employee headcount. We also can see that headcount by benchmark organization detail. The guidebooks are helpful because these kind of show you not only how to navigate through Paycor analytics, but it also can help you look at things like your talent within the organization, compensation, leave management, retention metrics. If we look at one like movement, this will show us and prompt us with what data we're looking at. For the period of March 2024, we can see who's moving, starting, and quitting, and take a deeper look at what that looks like for the organization. We can see eight starts here, and if I click on these starts and I hit details, we're looking at the list of eight people. So here's your list of granular. We can export to Excel from here. We can also create PowerPoints so that we can talk about this live real-time data that we're seeing together. If this resonates, I simply take a capture. These captures live in this capture section. Once I see some trends that I want to talk about, I can build an analysis for it. I can simply come in here and talk about this turnover story that I'm noticing, voluntary turnover under a specific manager in a specific department. Again, if you click on these charts and graphs, you can see the key details, but I can also put this into a presentation mode so that together we can look at live real-time data. There's also search capability. If I want to focus on turnover and I hit turnover, It'll take me to dashboards that'll probably be good to analyze um, different employee exit headcount by department or determining if there's a problem with turnover or not. But most importantly and most simply, you can come in here and use this like Google for reporting. I can simply say who had the most overtime last month, and this will highlight who had the most overtime. It'll point me in the direction of charts and graphs, or it'll simply say, because it's AI, hey, Megan, can you clarify for me? I don't understand your question. And it will give you some prompted options to help us focus in on our question. Here, it's showing the top three people from last month. If I click view breakdown, it shows me the chart and graph it pulled from. If I click into this chart and graph, it can show me the hidden details that I need to see. But as you can see below, it also prompts with the next question, show me in quarters, Yes, please. This is an easy way to grab the answers to reporting that you need.
heading back to the dashboard, Paycor is a full end-to-end -end solution with recruiting solutions, performance solutions, as well as learning and benefits solutions as well as what we went through today. But that is everything that we had planned to go through. So I will pause here for questions. Megan. Yeah, and if anyone wants to raise their hand, I can take them off mute if they want to ask a question out loud or if you want to post something up in the chat, then we'll answer any questions you guys might have. You did such a good job, Megan. No one has any questions. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Don't be shy if you do. There's no yeah. silly questions. No. Yeah. Do you just want Megan to kind of dive a little bit deeper into a certain subject? Then, yeah, whatever you guys need. Do you have any questions for Rob or anything? Sorry to put you on the spot, Rob. No problem at all. All right. Well, if any questions come to you, shoot some information over to the team and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. But I appreciate everybody's time and attention today and I wish you a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody.